Welcome back to Project Life Goal. We're going to start work on the vertical stabilizer today, which is actually out of order from the plans that Vans includes with the empennage kit. I did this on the advice of a former builder who suggested that it was a little easier to start with the vertical stabilizer rather than the horizontal stabilizer as uh, Vans calls out in their plans. So that's what I went with. Hopefully this will make uh, building up my skill set a little easier. I've got a couple of notes that I took during the process that we'll go through as uh, the time-lapse video goes through. Uh, the first thing I want to call out though is definitely if you're going to do this process, order the USB plans. Uh, I printed out the plan directions in addition to some of the drawings, which greatly helped because then I could have a, a copy that I didn't mind if it got damaged uh, nearby. So with that, let's go to the time lapse. So one of the first decisions that I had to make in this process was the prime or not to prime question, which there are certainly a lot of opinions about in the field of home-built aircraft. I chose to go with the priming approach, so I went ahead and removed all bluing from all of my pieces. Some of the pieces that come in the kit uh, already are exposed aluminum, they don't have bluing on them at all. So. That's why you don't see me removing it from every piece. The first process that they have you do is to uh, clico the spar doubler to the rear spar and then also attach the rudder hinge bracket. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, I haven't had a huge opportunity to study the plans in full depth, so you see me referencing them a lot there. Those are those extra printouts that I made. The next step is fluting and uh, seaming all these ribs to straighten them out. set up an additional camera here to give you a better close-up look of the work. Something I realized that uh, my security cameras I have in the garage, which I was hoping to use for a majority of the documentation purposes, uh, just wasn't going to give you guys a, enough detail, so I'll be going back and forth between them. It's just a small little point-and-shoot camera, which I'm realizing doesn't have the greatest uh, video quality, so I've already got a better camera on order for you guys so you don't have to see that uh, fluttering as it adjusts to the light levels in the room. I was taking my time on the fluting and seaming process while trying to straighten out these ribs, mostly because we didn't spend a huge amount of time on it during the EA Sport Air workshop, so I don't have a huge amount of experience on it. So I was trying to sneak up on getting them straight. So what I found is that I'd have to go back and flute and seam a couple times, because obviously the, the seaming process undoes some of the fluting. But it actually went a, a little quicker than I expected for this being my first real time doing it. Uh, I'm still getting used to those tools, like I said. The vice grips, while they're very nice because they're very repeatable, I did actually have to uh, tape the adjustment screw on the back of it because I found as I was working with it, I kept turning it slightly. So that helped me out a little bit. Uh, but I need to find a better way to, to release it because I've already started to develop a little bit of a, of a callus, if you will, from releasing it with my pinky. So one of the other pitfalls of using the point and shoot cameras is they do stop recording on you after uh, so long. 
I forget the exact numbers for the, the two different cameras that I tried, but essentially it's a, a very short time frame. It's only 10-15 minutes of video, then I'd have to restart the recording. Uh, another reason for getting that true video camcorder for you guys so that I don't have to spend time checking on it. Here I'm adjusting the front faces of those ribs as they attach to the front spar so they seat flush. I was kind of curious about this when I first pulled out the, the front and the rear spars if I needed to make any adjustment to them since those weren't called out in the plans. Uh, it turns out most of the adjustment that you have to make is to the front spar and then the front face of those ribs just to get them flush with each other. I was initially using that wood block for uh, drilling all the holes so I wouldn't push through and hit my finger. Um, really was only required for the bottom hinge brackets. The punching that Vans uses is so close to your final drill size that you can just very easily uh, drill right through the rest without having that backing block. Uh, you saw me messing with those Clico pliers. They were getting a little stiff on me and, and hanging up. Uh, later that night I was able to take a chisel to the rivet that holds them together and loosen those up a little bit. One of the things that I was doing, because I realized the hour that it was becoming at night, is I started to use the Clicos to basically show every hole that I had already done so that I wouldn't, you know, skip a hole or go back and do holes multiple times and get them too large. Uh, as always, wife came out and, and checked on me and when you look at this video, it doesn't look like I'm paying much attention to her, but I assure you we were carrying on a full conversation. It was uh, great to have her out there with me for a bit. So we're wrapping up uh, two and a half hours of total build time, which brings our project total to eight and a half hours, which includes cleaning and inventory items, and then 11 and a half hours if you include video editing trying to keep really good tabs on the actual time investments and keep good detail of how all the time was spent. A couple of final notes. When you're doing the rear spar and doubler and looking at the holes and reading the instructions, make sure you read drawing 27. It really helps you understand uh, why they're asking you to not do some of the holes that you're going to see on the prints, particularly drawing 6. They've got some great notes on drawing 6, which definitely helps. Then also be careful when you're doing your drilling of the rib to spar attach holes to number 30. Don't do the number 40 holes that will actually receive the skins on the rib slash spars, particularly part number 704, which is the root rib, 707, which is called just a rib, where they connect to the front spar. With that, thanks guys for watching. Like this video and subscribe to follow along. Leave comments below to give me your advice or any questions that you have. Thank you.